Hello everyone, this is Sirius Trivia and welcome back to another Battery Commandery Guide video. Today we'll look at the top 10 worst commanderies in the game, and with 70 total commanderies in Total War 3 Kingdoms, there are bound to be a few bad apples. So let's find out which ones are the worst, and also discuss a few ways to make the best out of them. First, judging commanderies can be a bit subjective, so let's set a very simple standard, and that is money. Almost all our commandery guides so far focus on how to improve your economy, so it only makes sense to judge our worst commanderies on their income potential. So with that said, let's kick off the countdown with the 10th worst commandery in the game in Dai. As we can see on the map, Dai is located all the way in the northern part of the map where most commanderies have only one specialty county. Because of this fact, a lot of commanderies on the, our list will come from the north. Now, Dai takes our number 10 spot because it is the only commandery in the game that does not produce anything from its specialty county as it only has a horse pasture. This county, as we can see here, has an upkeep cost but does not generate any income or produce any food or items. Instead, it provides a faction-wide discount to cavalry recruitment and upkeep costs it also unlocks the horse resource, which will increase your trade income by a bit. In the game, cavalry units are some of the most expensive units, so the horse pasture here in Dai will definitely pay for itself with its savings that it will generate for you throughout your game. But if we just look at the commandery in isolation, Dai as a whole is pretty crappy. The best way to build Dai is to keep the settlement level low as the horse pasture can be upgraded to level 5 regardless of your settlement level. So the ideal settlement level would be a level 4 small city where you will have 3 building slots. In those building slots, I recommend going for the level 5 land development building in the Magnet Estate and the level 5 government support building in the Grand Irrigation Canal. Combined, these two buildings will maximize food production and die, while providing just enough income to overcome the upkeep cost of the horse pasture. In the final building slot, we can follow the military theme here and go with the conscription building, which will reduce redeployment costs and increase the starting rank of new recruits by 3 ranks. It will also be cheap to build because of the combined 30% discount from the two Wuxing synergies granted by our two agricultural buildings. Now in this build, our goal is to maximize food production. So you might wonder why we opted for the Grand Irrigation Canal when the other level 5 option for the government support building chain is the Willowing Machine Workshop, which boosts food production by additional 50%. This is a point that we have already covered in our Peasantry Template Building Guide, but for those of you who have not seen that guide or has forgotten, the reason for this is quite simple. This is because in the entire government support building chain, the Willing Machine Workshop is the only building upgrade that requires a level 7 small regional city to be unlocked. So that means it is impossible to build it within our small city, so we're better off going with the Grand Irrigation Canal. And speaking of food production, we must review another concept covered in our peasantry template guide, which I will also link in the description below in case you want to go check that one out later. And that point is fertility. In the game, most players do not notice that each commandery is given a fertility level that can be low, average, or high. You can check this in the lower left corner of your screen when you have the commandery selected. And depending on the season, each level of fertility will provide different buffs and debuffs to food production and peasantry income. Dai in the game is a low fertility commandery, but ironically, the game does not punish food production for low fertility commanderies. Instead, it reduces their peasantry income, which will be no concern for us, as we only want food production out of Dai. Now moving on, taking the number 9 spot on our list is Henei which is another northern commandery located right on the northern bank of the Yellow River here. It also only have one specialty county in the farmland, which we will see is a food producing county with a pretty high upkeep cost. The reason why Hene is so high on our list is because that it's a high fertility commandery. 
so we get additional boost to our food production during every season except for winter, which is a reason why you always get better diplomacy deals with the AI factions during the winter season because their income level and food resource will be less during that season. Additionally, Hene is located directly on the Yellow River, so it comes with a harbor building chain. So we can easily create a small city build as shown here that features a level 4 harbor in the fishing port and the same two level 5 agricultural building to create a food powerhouse that will generate on average 54.5 food per turn. Now to put this number in context, a regional city settlement or a 6 building slot settlement that is considered fully built will cost you 24 food. So just with Hene you can supply enough food for two and a half fully built commanderies. Additionally, we could level up the settlement level of Hene all the way up to a small regional city to unlock the level 5 harbor building and the willowing machine workshop that we mentioned before to boost the food production just enough to justify the settlement upgrade. With this build, the food production drops a tad bit to 54.2 but it does open up two additional building slots where you can build the inn and the private workshop buildings to boost income in this commandery. Continuing on our list, we have a tie between Donglai and Ba for our seven and eight spots. Both of these commanderies have harbor buildings, much like Hene, but both of them are just average fertility commanderies instead of high fertility. So even with the same buildings as Hene, the maximum food production for these two commandery tops out just at 49.25, which is still enough for two fully built commanderies. So that is why these commanderies are relatively high on our list. Rounding out at number six spot is Fuling Commandery, which is the only rice paddy commandery on our list. If we take a look at the rice paddy building chain, you can see that rice paddies produce more food than their grain farmland counterparts in the north, but cost a little bit more in terms of upkeep. Luckily for Fuling, it is a high fertility commandery, but without food from fishing from a harbor building chain, the maximum amount of food that can be produced here is just 43.9. Moving on to the final five, we start out with a tie between Yinchuan and Ye at number 4 and number 5. Both of these commanderies are high fertility farmland commanderies without a harbor building, but luckily they also have the additional buff that separates them from the rest of the top 3 as they are also ancient capitals. Now ancient capitals in the game refers to the Chunqiu Zhangguo period right before the Qin dynasty where these commanderies used to be capitals of the different kingdoms during that time period. In the game, these commanderies being ancient capitals will grant its owner 15 additional prestige points plus 8k population growth per turn as well as a 2 point boost to public order. It's not a huge benefit, but anything helps when you're in the top 5 of the worst commander in the game. Our number 2 and number 3 spots is also a tie between Jiangxia and Anping. Both of these commanderies are average fertility farmland commanderies without a harbor, so they're almost just as boring as you can get, but luckily for them, there is Shangdang, who takes the number one spot on our list and is the only low fertility farmland commandery in the game, making it the worst commandery in Total War Three Kingdoms. So here is our full list of the top 10 worst commanderies in the game. And now we're going to move on to the more interesting part of our guide as we explore some potential uses for these crappy commanderies. The most standard route, and the one that we have been discussing so far, is to make them into food slash military commanderies. With just two building slots and a farmland county, most of these commanderies can produce enough food to supply two additional fully built commanderies. And since we need a small city to upgrade the level 5 upgrades of these building chains, we are going to have one additional building slot, which is ideal for a cheap conscription building that will help reduce redeployment costs throughout your empire. Additionally, we can go with the utility route, where we will build buildings that are useful, 
but do not belong in any income-focused commanderies, such as the school building or the bandit and tribute buildings for Zhengjiang faction, for example. Another option we have is to build anti-corruption in these commanderies so they can help reduce corruption and boost income in adjacent commanderies that are actually capable of generating good income. For this route, we can either build the Grand Treasury Mint from the State Workshop Building Chain or the Office for Archive and Seals from the Administrative Office Building Chain. Both of these require a small regional city, so you might just want to consider the cheaper option of a level 4 coin maker from the state workshop building chain, which will only require a small city to be built, and still provides a decent income with additional 10% boost to reduction to corruption. Finally, the most interesting and efficient way to deal with these terrible commanderies is to create your own vassals. In the game, there are exactly six traits that carries the effect of increased ambition to gain independence as administrator. These traits are ambitious, charismatic, competitive, disloyal, distinguished, and greedy. Oftentimes, when you see characters with one or more of these traits in our recruitment pool, we have often turned our backs on them, but they serve a purpose in the game as you can assign these characters with these traits as your administrators to a commandery such as Shangdang, and just wait for them to ask you for independence. At that time, as a kind and wise master, we will grant them their independence, which will make them like you in terms of diplomacy. And then you can in turn negotiate a deal to make this new and weak faction into your vassal. And as your vassal, they will provide per turn payments and a full army stack that will help defend your capital for free. So as you can see, there are no such things as bad commanderies in the game, as there are always ways to make every commandery useful for you. This is Serious Trivia, hope you enjoyed this guide, and see you next time. Bye!